So this is the first problem of humanism, is that you state that, that human flourishing is the touchstone of the moral compass, but then when I ask you, well, what's a human then? Your touchstone becomes fudge, it melts under pressure. Because you're saying that people can identify as what they want. If they want to identify as a woman, they can identify as a woman. Right, great. So now tell me what a woman is so people can identify as it. They look like a woman. Someone could look like a woman. Doesn't, a doesn't change what their genetic code is. I could look like a monkey, but it doesn't make me a monkey. If, if you ah. distinguish between sex and gender, why can't you define woman according to sex exactly. rather than gender? Yep. You have whitewashed women from the history books. They now no longer exist as far as you're concerned. There's no such thing as a woman because you, 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 still can't, you still can't tell me what a woman is. Liberal progressives always talk about tolerance, let's have inclusivity, let's, have, let, let, let's, let's live in a world in which people accept one another, but they are the least tolerant people in the world. What do you mean? Because I've never heard of... Exactly, you haven't. No. But, but this is a narrative that runs through liberal, secular, humanists' assessment of religion. The reality is, bro, Christianity abolished slavery multiple times. Mm. Did you know that? Not multiple. Yes, not yes, multiple oh, no, times. Sorry, I mean... No, not yes, not exactly. Oh, I'm not sure. Exactly. So when, so in the in the in the mythology of liberal secularists about Christianity, they have this vision, this view that Christians practiced slavery for 1,800 years or 1,700 years, mm -hmm. and then William Wilberforce came along and Abraham Lincoln, and then we abolished slavery. Not true at all. All the way through 2,000 years of Christian history, Christians consistently fought against slavery, consistently abolished slavery, uh, and on multiple occasions made it illegal. The first time that it was abolished in, the, in the, these islands was in 1068. Ah, I, this is the judge's legal decision, right? No, it was 1068. No man can be free in England. So no man can be held a slave in England. 1068, it was the, it was the, um, the Diet of, the Synod of, I forget which synod it was. Okay. It, um, some town in England, obviously. But, but, but what, what I'll say about that. And, and William the Conqueror abolished yeah. the slave trade in England that was being practiced as a Saxon hangover. But clearly, I mean, it has to be abolished multiple times. That means it was brought back. Yes, because. You brought it back. Well, I mean, if we're different time, yeah, different times for different reasons. And this is the point of history. This is where it gets more complicated. Yeah. Yeah, but my previous opponent just wanted to come out with sound bites and he didn't want to do real historical conversation. I agree with that, and I do feel your 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 history was slightly less than yeah. I was hoping your, your, for. Your, 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 your educational and your openness to learning is far higher, so I'm able to or do have a more nuanced conversation with you. But this but, is the bit but I'm struggling with. Can I just point out to you, yeah. the United States was founded as a liberal secular state. Okay. It practiced, it practiced slavery. Yeah? Like, the, slavery was reintroduced in Europe because of Islam. When they, inv when they occupied Spain and Portugal, they reintroduced slavery for 700 years so that Christians grew up in worlds in which slavery would, had been renormalized, mm. and then Spanish Christians and Portuguese Christians started taking slaves again. And then when they were doing it, because of the economic success that it gave, liberal states, liberalizing states like England, like France, which was a French Republic, a secular liberal republic, like America. 11th, 12th century, we still talk about. No, well, this is after that. We're talking. Portuguese and Spanish started doing slavery 13th and 14th century. Okay. Western liberal slavery in America continued as a hangover of British colonialism. Yeah. The British did it because of the Spanish and the Portuguese. So, yeah, so, so, I, I can see where. I see where you're coming from. My my problem with that is, I mean, we still did have slave. I mean, we had slavery from Irish coming into the or we took slaves from Ireland to the UK. Yes. There were slaves from the Vikings took slaves. Like slavery existed in Europe at the very least. I appreciate you might not say Vikings. At least early Vikings definitely weren't Christian. Yeah, exactly. Did over time. Exactly. So where where Dane law dominated, slavery was normalised. And if you grow up where slavery is everywhere, you think it's normal. Yeah. So but the point is I that, that when culture. when ex exactly and this is the point that secular humanists never get is that Christianity creates its own culture. 
Christianity, when we touch ourselves and build ourselves on the teachings of the apostles and the prophets, it creates a different kind of culture that leads to the abol abolition of slavery. But when that is pushed back against because it's renormalized through Islamic occupation or Danish pagan occupation, Christians have to relearn their Christianity. I mean, it sounds very, very weak, I suppose, that third of Christianity when you see slavery coming around and some of us think, oh, we're going to pick that up, that's a nice idea. Well, no, I think, I think, you see it elsewhere I think it, when it went, yeah, degeneracy is just a human condition. But the reality is Christianity consistently elevates. Whereas liberal humanism, right? My, my okay. problems with liberal humanism is firstly, it's liberalism. And secondly, it's humanism. Okay. And then well, let's start off by who qualifies as human? Harder, but if you, I think you'd agree that you, you and I would qualify as human. On what grounds? Well, would you disagree? I have grounds for saying that you're a human being and I'm a human being. I'm asking the liberal humanist in this conversation what his ground is for saying that I'm human. I, I think hurt for me is about being generally a uh, speaking generally? rational human, human being. Not all human beings are rational, not all human beings are speaking. Are they not human now? No, but it's not a strict definition. It's well, I'm asking you, what is your definition? I know what blue is. I don't necessarily can define what, what, the difference what, what, between what, what, blue Are you purple, struggling? Blue right, red. but my point is, liberal secular humanism says that humanity yeah. and human flourishing yeah. is the touchstone of the moral compass. It's the guiding okay, light, yeah. the guiding star. But you can't even define what constitutes a human. So if you can't define what constitutes a human, what guidance is it to you? Well, I'd say, okay. I'd say it's, take that out, old Aristotle phrase, right? It's a rational speaking human being. But not all human beings are rational. I'd say mo and human, human being, being is begging example. the question. I'm asking what makes a human okay, being. Okay, a rational speaking being. A um, rational speaking being. What about mute what people? What about, what about mute people that can't speak? What about, what about the blind, the deaf? What about children that are born blind, deaf and dumb? Are they no longer humans because they can't communicate? Well, they can communicate. Even if we don't understand. Have you ever tried to communicate to someone who has those three disabilities? No, but I also struggle to speak Spanish. Doesn't mean Spanish. Doesn't mean that's not a communicative community. So, right? so therefore, speaking. Just because I can't. Wait. So that means that speaking, therefore, can't be in the definition of no, human. Communicative. Let's say communicative. Communicative. What yeah. about human beings in a vegetative state? I think it becomes much more difficult. What but about people in a coma? Are they human? Yes, but I think it becomes more difficult. But they can't communicate. This is why I think it's a general phrase. Right, right. Let, me that, you, let, me, let me give you one on. idea of why. Have read the question for define a game? Go on. Define a game. Go on. Well, you can't. That's the point. It's by familiar relations. You can point out what a game is, and you can come up. Lots of people know what games are, right? You can say football is a game, you can say chess is a game, you can say tag is a game, you can play yeah. games with yourself. Usually you'd say you need someone else, but not all games are one two players. Some games are one player, some games are zero player. The most most general philosophers, academics understand. And you're comparing that to moral practice. Members. And you're comparing no, no, no. that to no, no, moral. No, no. Yeah, what you're we comparing know is a human being. What we right. know is a human being. So we know what a human being is because first of all, we're human beings because we're beings. Wait, 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 wait. You're begging the question again. I'm asking you for your definition of a human being, and you can't give it. Every attempt that I don't think there's a strict one. There. Every attempt that you've made to try and give a definition of a human being yeah. has failed when tested, because I found an exception to the rule that you've given. Yeah. So this is the first problem of humanism: is that you state that that human flourishing is the touchstone of the moral compass but then when i ask you well what's a human then your touchstone becomes fudge it melts under pressure and that is my first problem with liberal humanism my second problem with liberal humanism is its its values okay. its emphasis on freedom individuality and equality these are problematic values why are they problematic values because freedom doesn't exist, it's known by its absence. It's like the shadow. You know what a shadow is because it is the absence of light. You don't know what freedom is because you have it. You know what freedom is because you don't have it. And you have the sense of it because you don't have it. That's the first problem. And, and liberal humanism doesn't even establish real freedom. Because I would argue that, that, that having multiplicities of choice is not what is really freedom. Real freedom is actually a category of knowledge. 
You must have the truth and the truth will set you free. So choice has got nothing to do with freedom. Truth has everything to do with freedom. Equality, once again, based on what? Who gets, what, what, what is the definition of equality? Because the reality is there's always winners and losers in every society. So what are we basing the idea of equality on? Liberals, classical liberals, not progressive liberals, say that it's equality under the law. Yeah. Classical liberals incidentally say that freedom is freedom from law, is, is freedom, is law not, uh, not created by religion. So it's freedom from religious law, which is incidentally how classical liberals define freedom. Yeah, right? Now, so the, the reality is that equality we can't achieve, it doesn't work. Let's so pick one. And let's pick one of those and then go with that. Okay, equality let's let's do equality. equality. Does everyone equality does under the should, law yeah. can't exist? It doesn't. Liberals can't create equality under the law because they can't define a, what a human is, and so there are always categories of what I would say are humans that okay. don't have equality under the law. Case in point: abortion, yeah. the murder, mass murder of children. They are human beings, but they don't have the right to life that you have. If I, okay. if I blow you up in a vacuum yeah. or pour acid on you, I'll be arrested, and rightly so. But if you do that to the fetus inside of a womb, it's totally fine. Okay. If I chop you up with big incisors and cut off your legs and cut off your arms and suck out your brain with a hoover, yeah. that's a crime, and rightly so. Yeah. It's barbaric. But if I do it to a, a seven-month-old child where the mother wants an abortion, that's not murder. Okay, firstly, I think you're right. If you get 100 people in a room, you get 101 opinions of what freedom is, what equality is. Yeah. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist, right? In the same way, or it doesn't mean it can't exist. You can't have equality in the law. So just define for me freedom then. Disagree. Define for me freedom. I think you've done quite a good job of it. Quite a good job of it. It's freedom from, so it's freedom from what? <laughs> overbearing. It's freedom from external control or external interference. Yeah. And I think there's an element of it which is <laughs> freedom to self actualize. Okay. I think there's an element of that to it as well. Yeah. I also think it's a political concept and therefore by nature it's something you can discuss and debate and argue about in a way that you can't with what is a camera, what is a chair, which are much more concrete, right? But that's yeah. quite a political concept, right? We debate it. What is democracy is a bigger question. Yeah. That, so the point is, freedom, so the point is, you say you, you're, right, but the point is, if you if you have a game, yeah. right, and yeah. the rules of this game keep changing, yeah, yeah then the, the reality is that you don't have a you don't have a game with rules. Football, if you if you you're just able, football has rules. Right? If you agree, football has rules. But rule, but but the rules are changing, right? Yeah. So VAR. We, right. So so. Do you, do you agree with VAR? Well, well, I, I have no idea what that is. I don't I don't like football. Rubbish. I'm interested. I, I do. But that's a good example. Football has I, changed its rules in the last five years. It changed rules ten right, years ago. Right. So hockey changes its rules. Basketball changes its rules. Yes. It's change. Right. Five hundred years ago. Football. Yes. So how much does football have to change before it stops being football? Well, I mean, you go 500 years ago, and they still play it up in North, right? Football, you pick up the ball, exactly. you get 200 people. Exactly, exactly. Have you ever done that, by the way? I've not. I'm, you should. should. You should. You should. No. It's re really worth yeah. doing it. Yeah. But my point to you is, would you call that original football football? Yes, because it's still called football. It's, but it is still called football. It is not recognised. Three, three games it, in the country. It would not. It would not. It would not qualify in the FA. It wouldn't qualify. In the exactly. FA. But the FA. Exactly. So my point is. So so one. So this is what I'm trying to say to you is that okay. your ideology is morphic and is yeah. ungrounded. I want to say. And ungrounded, therefore, and therefore, morphic. not only do the goals change, mm. but the means to get to the goals change. Yeah. And, and this for me is problematic. Okay. By comparison. Can I, can I come in there? Yeah, of course. Let's go back a bit when we talk about slavery again. Yeah. Obviously, some Christian, you were like something, Franciscan, we didn't have all the way to world before. Some Christians said it was, should be, a, should be abolished. Some Christians did avidly defend it and avidly were for it. I mean, did it change? I mean, clearly, what the Catholic Church changed over the course of 600 years, Anglican Church changed its mind over a few hundred years. So, so, so let, me, so let me reply. Yeah. So let me reply. The, 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 in, the inspiration that our Lord gave 2,000 years ago that led to the abolition of slavery has not changed. You can still find it in the Bible. It says, okay. it says, I have come to set the captives free. Jesus is quoting Isaiah. Isaiah is talking about prisoners of war that were slaves. And he's giving a prophecy of one who would come to set the captives free. 
Now Christ is, is doing it in two senses. He's doing it in the meta sense, which is the meta sense is this idea that Christ is setting us free from sin. He's setting us free from being captives to sin through the knowledge of the truth, yeah. which is him and knowledge of him because he is the truth, yeah. right? But the, insp the, 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 the logical outflowing of that is that you seek to set slaves free. And that's why saints, even in the Roman period, were setting slaves free. Mm. And as Christians meditated and studied on this, it inspired them to set slaves free. Not all Christians did meditate and study it. Not all Christians did saturate themselves in it. But when, but every now and then in the in history, Christian history, you get this touchstone where where Christians think about slavery and what Christ did for the slaves of sin and go, hey, we need to set slaves free. And that happens again and again and again and again and again and again through human history. Okay. Liberalism and humanism can't give us that. Liberalism, liberalism can't give us abolitionism. It, it, liberalism didn't give us abolitionism. Liberalism can't, liberal can't give us abolitionism. Liberalism could also, in 500 years, go back to the idea of slavery being a good thing again. I think, I mean, I mean when you have a word where the first three syllables are liberal, yeah. and the concept is about freedom, and you've said it yourself, it's about freedom, I think it's very hard to find any liberal who defends slavery. I would challenge you to give me an example. Like, am I wrong? Because they were born in a Christian milieu and influenced by Christianity. Well, I very strongly would disagree with that. But even today, I mean, if you go to France, you go to the UK, you're not going to find it. It's very rare. No, I am. Well, right, yeah, no. Not so, but here's my point. Here's my yeah. main point around that, right? <coughs> What a community of liberals agree on isn't necessarily what I would agree on, isn't necessarily what's right. And the same way what a community of Christians agree on isn't necessarily what you think Christianity yeah. should be saying. Do you, agree with yeah. a, do you agree with a humanist statement? That, what? So there, there's, no there's been three, there's been three productions of the humanist statement. One in the 1930s, one in the 1970s, and one in the 2000s. Yeah. I think it was in the 2000s. 2000s. Exactly. Yeah. What? 2000 exactly. No, 2000. Yeah, I know, but manifesto. So, so which, of those, which of those manifestos do you agree with? Uh, honestly, I cannot remember them on the top of my head. I'm not, I'm manif unsurprisingly, I'm not a very good guy when it comes to remembering the manifestos. Right. Uh, but it's the statement. I, I believe there is, I do not believe in God. Yeah. And I believe that we find value in the world that we live in. Right. So, so this is one of the ways in which Christianity is a better guidance to you than liberal humanism. Mm. Is that within the, the, the Christian community, we have the institutional church. And the yeah. institutional church has the ability to settle the argument, has Can the ability to give Christian? guidance. I'm, I'm just Christian, just Christian. So the church is in the ethereal the, church. The, the ethereal church, okay. the body of Christ. And, and we also have authorities like the Bible. And we have a goal, we have a, a, a consistent goal that as Christians we're always aiming at, which is that the job of the church is to produce saints holy unto God. Okay. And a, 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 a holiness is a person who lives by virtue and truth and embodies virtue and truth in their life. Truth is a stable thing that you can go back to and reference again and again and again. And virtue is a habit of lifestyle that you cultivate through practice. Liberal humanism doesn't even give you an ethical practice because how do you achieve the goal of human flourishing? Which, which ethical system do you adopt? Utilitarianism, situational ethics, deontolog Kantian deontological, uh, 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 moral imperative like what exactly do you do how exactly do you get there like liberal well, humanists tough, so liberal humanists tough. neither have a path nor do they have a goal because no, but I, I, I would challenge anyone who says that they know exactly what is right and wrong forever more than I mean. Um, we went 500 years ago, a thousand years ago, and we talked to people. People tell us that. Right, I'll, I'll give you an. Let, 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 I'm going to attempt to prove. I'm going to okay. attempt to say that you're wrong. Okay. So, for example, the Bible says, "Thou shalt not lie." Do you think, as a maxim, that that is always the maxim that we should aim at, even though? Under certain circumstances, it might be trumped like when you've got Anne Frank That's up in the attic. The yeah. Or a yes. communist murder at the door. Yeah. Yeah. Or a communist murder. But broadly, yes, it's broadly true, but there's right. exceptions to the rule, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so what we're saying now, so what we're saying is that, that in every situation, in every civilization, we should create a world, mm. we should create a world in which people are honest with one another. Yeah. That that is a better world than a world in which we're not honest with one another. Great. Yes, As a Christian, I'm fixed to that because of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Okay. 
But as a liberal humanist, you're not bound to that. Well, as I a am, liberal I respect for other human beings, right? But okay. by my moral thing, what counts you, as a, what accept, counts as a human not being? Agree with that? Would you what? not believe in that if what? you weren't a Christian? No, no, no. I, I, I'm not saying that, that you need to be a Christian to believe in that. Lots of people believe in that. Yeah. But my point to you is that as a Christian, I, that's a fixed point for me. It's an unmovable peg. It's been hammered in the ground and my tent is held up by that peg. Yeah. As a liberal humanist, you can't present to me a basis for agreement. You do agree, and I agree that you agree, but you can't give me a reason to agree. Well, I'm a, I, I would say... I'd use an academic word of an explainer. I'd say I'm a Kantian constructivist. Okay. By constructivist, I mean because we live in a society of other people all around us. Yeah. That's why we have to be ethical. My grounding is the fact that I live with other people. Right. And I don't think I think that's a very firm foundation. Because I don't. Hold think on one second. I'd also say, and I'm saving. Would about, you Would you agree? Would, would Would you agree that we live in a like? I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Would you agree that di there are competing individuals and competing communities in this island? Yes. And would you agree that? Would you agree that one of the ways that a, a human being can flourish is through gaining an advantage over other people? Probably not, honestly, no. An no, advantage, well, when you I, say yes. advantage. So, so for instance, if I'm, if I'm a human being pursuing my own flourishing as an individual, yeah. and I'm selling a car, and if I can get you to buy this car, I'm going to flourish. But the way that mm. I need to sell you this car is to lie to you Mm. By your understanding of, the, of, of this ethical system of pursuing one's own flourishing, yeah. my lying to you advances my own flourishing even though it doesn't advance yours. Mm. I see where you're coming from. No, because... Go on. Just monetary benefit, you'd agree monetary benefit is not the same as, or monetary improvement is not the same as war. I agree. So just because I might get a monetary benefit of lying to you, great, helping create society and we lie to each other, yeah. that's a moral degradation, that's morally worse. I'm not improving my own flourishing morally, even if I can actually benefit. But what metaphysical, but, but on what basis? Because this because is the... Because I'm a human being living in right, society. But, but, but the point is, that, that's irrelevant to my triumph in, in selling you a dodgy car. Yeah, you're right, and I think this is one of the biggest but, problems we have in society. So, so, so you're... you're a, a, one second. You're appealing, you're appealing, you're appealing, you're appealing to an idea. The idea is that by, by, by me not doing a right action, I'm degenerating morally. But that is a metaphysical claim. That is a claim that is not established in the natural world. As a liberal secular humanist, you have no basis for metaphysics. There is no ought. You can't get from an is to an ought. You can't go from a description to a prescription. You, you, the, and what you're why, doing why is... Do you think that's right? right, because deciding that something... To say, to say that there is moral degeneracy assumes a moral compass, mm -hmm. assumes morality, assumes values, assumes the idea that, that moving towards a, that direction, whatever it is, yeah. is a morally good thing. But all of these are supernaturalistic claims. They are not naturalistic claims. They're not empirically proven. Show me yeah, the yeah. value. Give me the empirical well, evidence for the value. Do you think, well, aesthetics, for example, things can look beautiful or look ugly. Yeah. I don't need to believe in God to believe that. I hope you would agree at least that much. But, that's but, not but human beings thing. find different things ugly. Some people, yes. some people, some people look at Christian art and think it's ugly. Some people look at Christian art and think it's beautiful. I go to the modern Tate gallery and I just want to rip half the pictures off the wall because I think they're a waste of space. Mm. My point to you is that liberal humanism, if it's honest, if it's integral, collapses into relativism. And when it collapses into relativism, relativism it, it collapses into merely which, who's got the bigger gun? Who gets no, to dominate no, no. the other one? And I'll say why I disagree. So, I want, no, I, want, I, want, wait, I want you to establish me, establish for me the grounds by which you can talk about moral degeneracy. What metaphysical grounds can you talk about morality? What metaphysical grounds can you define as moral goodness? And, and what metaf and, and the, the, the direct that we, sh that we have an ought, that we ought to move towards moral goodness. Using a truly atheistic, non-supernatural argument, how do you get there?
Okay, so we live in a, you would agree at the very least, and this is an estate, but we do live in a community. We live in a society with the people around us. We live and in we a society. society, I wouldn't say we live in a community, we live in a society. Okay, we, we live with other individuals. Is that good enough? Yes, we do. Okay. We live in under in, we live in, with other individuals and communities. And I have to interact, engage, trade, talk, all these things with individuals. Correct. Yes. So yes. To do that, to have a conversation, there's some certain rules we almost have. Yeah. Implicit in this conversation, the very basic is I talk, and you talk, and then I talk, yeah. and I don't punch you in the face, and you don't punch yeah. me in the face. You might say you made a promise, almost in that sense. When we just had a conversation. We got a social contract, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So we ought to not do that. We ought not to make promises. Most of the people would agree a promise has an implicit rule. Right. right. So, so. Do you not, would you disagree? I, I am saying that what I'm saying is that you haven't established your reasons for that ought. You've acknowledged that the ought is there, yeah. but you haven't established any reason from a liberal humanist worldview why we should follow it, other than the fact that it's a social contract. Okay, if right. I want to leave society and go on an island and interact with no one ever again for the rest of my life, I think we're allowed to go that way. In that situation, right? Because right. I'm not impacting anyone, I'm only impacting myself. Now I could. Your, your, your argument is from the social contract. But the problem yeah. is, the problem with that social contract is if we as a group all agree that anyone who hasn't got our skin colour should take a second place in society and we're the ones in power and we're the ones that are the strong ones because we have created that social contract that suddenly becomes the ought and you know very well that there's plenty of historical examples of where white people have done that yeah, absolutely. and we can point to the fact that Christians are treated like as second class citizens across the Muslim world because they've made a social contract that Christians should be second class citizens. So the reality is that this social contract is not sufficient ground for your ought. But here's my alternative as a Christian. We all have the imatio Dei. We all have the image of God within us. Every one of us is made with it. And it is irrelevant how old you are, what color skin you've got, whether you're male or female, whether you're black or white, young or old, whether you're abled or disabled, whatever your gender is, whatever your sexuality is, that image of God is there before anything else. And as Christians, we are instructed to honor and to love the image of God, whoever bears it. Which means that we don't agree with abortion, we don't agree with taking slaves, we don't agree with apartheid systems. It's independent of a social contract. Because remember, when Christians were fighting against slavery, we were fighting against it in a civilization that accepted slavery. So we were going against the social contract. Yeah. yeah? But I... you have no grounds to go against the social contract if the social contract agrees that we don't do X, Y, or Z. No, because the fact we... So first of all, the fact we live in a community of people that itself has certain rules. But this we've just we've just created I'm in that in our hypothetical statement, we've just invented a society in which white people who dominate everything have decided that anyone who's not white is second class. Okay. So that's now the social contract. Give me the ought, the reason for the ought to go against that social contract. Do you think we should have that in society? As a Christian, no. But as a Christian, why am I saying that? Why am I saying that? I'm not saying it because I'm not going in a circular loop that says the social contract should not involve slavery because the social contract should not involve slavery. I'm saying that as a Christian, everyone, independent of other factors, anyone who's a human being, has the image of God. Okay. And that let, let let's, me, let me give let's an look example. at abortion. Let me give an example. Use Why? abortion. Well, I'll use you example and then we'll go If I'm talking to you. Well, I've got the if I talk to you and I said you don't speak English, would you disagree? What? If I said you don't speak English, you disagree. Oh, I would assume you disagree. <laughs> what, sorry? And we could have this back and forth over and over. Yeah. But it wouldn't make sense what I'm saying, right? Go if on. I said you don't speak, you can't speak, you can't use English words, yeah. it wouldn't make any sense. Yeah. The basis of how we have this conversation doesn't make sense. I think, in the same way, the idea that black people, that women, that gay people, anything like that can't be 
as equal members of society, it's completely disproven by the fact that you engage people like they're complete members of society. But like again, it doesn't make sense all you're to appealing, have this you, you, you haven't established the ought there. All you've done is appeal to the social contract. No, my point is, if we have this conversation, which is a promise that two people can have a conversation with one another, that is the point of living together, that two people can engage with one another, and then you suddenly go, yes, but that person can't do that. But that is exactly I'm what talking so to that person. But that's exactly what do societies have no done. Sense. That's exactly what societies have done again right. and again and again. And this is society but you haven't, failing ethically. You have, and that's the proof of it. But you haven't given me any reason for the evaluation that they failed ethically, because a you haven't given me any foundation for an ethical system. B you haven't given me an ethical system. And, oh no, sorry you did, you said uh, deconstructionism, social deconstructivism. Social constructivism. So, so I'm engaging with yes. your social constructivism, yeah. right? The, the reality is, as a Christian, my, com my, my trump card over your system is this. I have an ought. I must be like my God. Yeah. I must be holy like my God, right? Holy as my Father in heaven is holy, yeah. right? That is an inexhaustible goal. Yeah. Right? There's always room for improvement at every level because to be perfect is a never-ending uh, direction, right? Yeah. And, and I also have a, 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 a structure, I have, I have an under, a, form, a framework by which I can achieve that goal to embody virtue and to embody truth. And I have a source of truth that I can use that I can then embody. Yeah. And in terms of an ethical system, I have a ethical system called virtue ethics, yeah. which is independent of society. It's actually independent of other individuals as well. Mm. It's purely internal. It's the habits of my own lifestyle. And I'm pro positing that that is a far better way to achieve, a far better system of thought to achieve human flourishing than what you're offering. But because again, I'm going to go back then, because if you look at the history again, we can see slavery for 1,500 years, 2,000 years, under any monotheistic religion, Christian or Muslim, or you see slavery coming about constantly. Yeah. I think it's... Go on, I'm listening. There are some Christians who will, you have historically gone against that. Yeah. And especially around the turn of the 17th, 18th century. Yeah. It changed, but for a good 600 years it did that. No, that's and wrong. It, every time, well, and every time you say that slavery came about adjacent when you had it coming about no Andalus, when you had it coming about from the Burberry slave trade, Christianity started adopting it. That seemed like a very tepid moral system to me. Right. If you have a hundred years ago, even, you can see the yeah. complete subjugation of women. You can see women seen as property based on law in the UK, which in itself is based on Christian natural law. Yeah. And then you have at home with music laws in it before then. You still have it today with anti-trans laws, you have it today with public order laws, which just don't seem if you think that's coming from Christianity, I'm very concerned. If so, you don't so, think that's so, you, 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 you're right. Christians are anti-trans ideology, and the reason why Christians are anti-trans ideology is because trans ideology is anti-woman. The, the the fact of the matter is, trans uh, uh, trans ideology mm. is essentially the triumph of uh, um, um, misogyny because it's saying to women and only women that they don't exist that actually women are a non-thing that are not identifiable and that actually they should share space that they won through their own efforts to establish greater equality that they should now sacrifice that in sport safe spaces in terms of in prison or in toilets or in, um, in, in housing shelters, if liberalism, so now I'm identifying you, and correct me if I'm wrong, are you a liberal progressive, since you're pro-trans? I just say centrist liberal. But no, right, my point of this is... Are you, are you pro-trans? Are you pro-trans? Are you pro-trans ideology? I don't know what that means. I'm, okay, so are, you, so favor, I mean are you in favour? Are you, wait, wait. Are you in favour of giving to trans women all the rights of women? All the rights of women. Yes. For example, I, I think that's a pretty clear statement. All the rights. All yes, not necessarily rights all. of women. It's, there's nothing. There's nothing vague yeah, about. But not, any, right. not necessarily access. To so all the your same your liberal progressive thought. Nice man. Bob, God bless nice you. Man. God bless you. Your li I'll give you something, bro. Your liberal progressive thought 
has made you anti-woman. You so. are anti-woman. In, in what way? In that you deny women their natural rights. You deny them safe spaces. You deny them. You deny them their existence. When you say natural, right. what's a woman? What do you mean natural? Right? What's As a woman? Opposed, well, I got there first. Let me get by them. Yes, that's true. What do you true, mean by natural? Enough. Natural rights versus physical rights. Right. So I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example of yeah. natural rights. Right. Yeah. A natural right. Women are all the weaker sex. It's pure fact. It's okay. pure fact, bro. And actually, trans ideology has proven to us inconclusively that women are the weaker sex. Because an average male athlete who's mid-ranking in his own field okay. says that he's transgender, goes into the woman's field and suddenly arrives at the top immediately okay. because of denser bones, because of uh, uh, more muscle mass. And so, and so, and so, one of the natural white, one of the natural rights of women, as the weaker sex, is that they should be protected from the abuse of men, by men. As a trans ideologist, you're anti-woman because you're willing to endanger women by allowing women, uh, make, forcing women, uh, the vast majority of who object, forcing women to share their space with men. I'll tell you why I disagree. I don't agree about natural right in the first place. Because it's because really, what? it should be the rights of people to be free from abuse. Why, why do you agree with natural right? Why do you disagree with natural rights? Because I think rights are political by nature. Right, so you're back to your social contract again. Right, yes. Right. So, do, so you, do you think we have rights if we lived on an island with no one around us? So you've you've no, so you've just you've just demonstrated my point, which is that you want a social contract, which mm. I disagree with, in which women's rights are diminished and women's rights are taken away. That's exactly what trans rights has led to. Well, let's compare natural and political rights for a moment. Right, what, what are natural, natural rights? What natural rights did the Armenians have? What are natural when rights? When they were fleeing from the Turkish genocide. What, what are natural rights? Rights based in our nature, rights based in humanity, I would right. assume. Or you tell me if I'm wrong. Right, so a natural right is a right that we can observe through reason because it presents itself in the natural world. Okay. That's what a natural right is. Yeah? Not far off, and have you, yeah. No, no, you weren't. You weren't at all. So it, it's, a, it's a fair observation of nature. It's not okay. sexist or misogynist to say that women are weaker than men, pound for pound. Okay. But yeah? If I say a political right, a political right is one that exists. Yeah, political right is we different. Live in equality. Exactly. In right, you, right, you we believe in equality, but you've right taken away. Equality. Right, what's a woman? What's a woman? Sorry, I can see you probably get the same thing. <laughs> Sex and their identity. I don't, I, when you said trans people should have the same rights of all women, no, oh, they should have the same rights as all people. Yes, exactly. And so, if you're talking about the difference between men and women, when it comes to sports, I think uh, trans people should have all rights as people to identify as whatever they want to. But when it comes to sports, that's when you're bringing into the physical difference between men and women, and that is where the a uh, trans person's identity and their sex becomes different because trans people may identify as something you know that they weren't born as. So not everyone has gone through a surgery, not everyone goes through a transition, not everyone goes through hormones so, like changing. So you can't really uh, identify, oh this person is transitioned enough to compete with the people that were born as females and this person has gone through enough to compete with other females. I think I don't know, maybe a different category, it's kind of a like a muddled subject. So, sorry, what is the category of woman? What is a woman? What defines a woman? Someone that identifies as a woman, but So what what would you that, that's sorry, that that's totally circular logic. What is a woman? You're saying that someone can identify as a woman. If you're saying that someone identifies as a woman, you're saying that a woman is a specific thing. So what is that thing that someone is identifying as? There's a difference between gender identity and sex. Sex Great. being so, male and female. So what is a woman? Well, that's the point. Because you're saying that people can identify as what they want. If yeah. they want to identify as a woman, they can identify as a woman. Yeah. Right, great. So now tell me what a woman is so people can identify as it. Right, so this is the problem with trans ideology. Trans ideology is irrational ideology. An irrational ideology is an, an ad hoc, uh, self-contradictory ideology that in this particular example relies upon indefinite terms. It uses the word woman it, 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 it uses an indefinite term that it cannot define. 
So I'll ask you both again, since you're the trans ideologists. If people can identify as something, in this case, woman, what is a woman for them to identify as? Okay, we've created the separation. We've invented, or, or rather, mm -hmm. trans ideologists have invented a separation between gender and sex. That does not exist. Well, there is no, there is no, there is no separation between gender and sex. Gender and sex are one-to-one -one identifications with one another. I agree. So, for example, so for example, in the Muslim world, um, it, it, it's considered feminine to wear jewelry and silk if you're a man, because that's considered feminine. And I agree, these things are social constructs. But a woman. Who, which is also a gender, a woman is someone who has a biology. They have a certain chromosome set. And that chromosome set gives them physical, mental, emotional, uh, biological infrastructure that is different and identifiably different from a man. What about intersex people? Or throughout history, there have been religions like Native American people where there's so intersexed you're talking about biological intersex yes uh, as well as okay so biological biological intersects are no more normative than any other human mutation there are children that are born uh, siamese twins we used to call them then uh, just jo uh, i think they're called joint twins that doesn't define what is normal for humanity you don't say that because a human being is born uh, in in this uh, this Siamese twin state, that therefore that now needs to be normalised. That's not normal. That is a genetic mutation. That is a a a, a genetic uh, chromosome mistake in the the development. It's abnormal. So intersex is abnormal. And the thing about trans ideology is it's trying to normalize that which is abnormal and it's trying to convince the world that that which is false is true, which is another problem with liberalism. Well, I think you're going from this we all there a little bit, but still. Can I just ask you, you define what, can you define what you think woman is? How would you define it? Yeah, a woman. Now, I always, I, I, I might embarrass myself with the, 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 the genetic makeup, but if, if my memory serves genetic. correctly, yeah, it's X and Y chromosome okay. makes up a woman. So no one you or is it X and X? Is it X and X? X yeah, and X. yeah, you're right. So I knew I was going to get it the wrong way. So, no so it's X and X that makes up a woman, and it's X, X and Y okay. that makes no. up so, a man. So no one knew what a woman was before the 1950s, and genetics became a field. No, actually, loads of people knew what a woman was. So in fact, everybody. Was. In fact, everybody knew what a woman was. Linnaeus, Newton. I don't think Jesus Christ knew about fucking X X and what X Y. They didn't need to. You so know why? Know yeah. Shall I tell you why yeah. they didn't know? Because we didn't have trans nonsense. We've got trans nonsense now and trans nonsense has obfuscated and conflated what a woman is. The Romans understood. As identified the by the fact that I've asked you, I've asked you, to, I've asked you to identify what a woman is and you can't. Well, it's a self-identity thing. That's no, it point. isn't. It's yes, a genetic it thing. Well, it's a genetic thing, then it, no one knew about it before genetics. So this, no, no, this is, this people is knew not what true. People was before no. knew what chemi No, knew people, chemistry. people are pushing. No, yes. that's just not true. If you go through history, People knew what men and women were in history. Why? It's purely physical. No, not at all. Well, yeah, it's purely biological. But the, the, the fact is, the confusion has emerged out of liberal progressive thought that has, that, has, that has indoctrinated people very successfully through media, through education, has indoctrinated people to actually contradict what they see with their eyes. You're identifiably a woman. You're identifiably a man. You're identifiably a woman because of your genetics. You're identifiably a man because of your genetics. And the so fact you, the fact that liberal progressive ideologues mutilate little girls and chop them up in a way that is irreversible and chemically castrate them because they are ideological fanatics and use chemicals to try and change the balance of chemistry inside the human body so that a woman starts presenting as a man and a man starts presenting as a woman 
is a sign, a proof to the fact that your whole ideology is built on lies and requires lies to be maintained. I think that's very, I think we disagree with chemical castration, the same way you disagree with chemical castration in the 1950s again. Actually, you can't speak for all humanists, for one, because humanism well, is individualistic. You can't speak for all Christians, I I can speak for all Christians because Christians use a religious authority that is outside of the individual. And it's not about what the masses think or what any one individual thinks. It's about what the authority says. And the authority says God created them male and female. Question, do you define religious authority by following the Bible or following a specific church? Or like based on what your group of people both. Or your individual Both. So historical Christianity has always been the church's use and interpretation of the Bible. Okay, so what about, why would you say your individual code is... It's not my individual code. That's the first thing. Okay, you following the Bible, is why is that um, like more justifiable than someone's individual code? Right, great. Great question. So why... why what, what a group Right. Thinks. So in terms of, in terms of why... I can give you the Christian answer to that, but I'm, I'm not giving it to you because I think that in, in a relativistic world, it's a convincing answer. But as a Christian, I believe that the, the scriptures are inspired by God's Holy Spirit to write down what God is doing in history, who God is and how we should live. And so for me, because the, the, the church has written the scriptures and identified that these are the authoritative texts, that's where we go to. The reason why, I, I, my argument is actually a pragmatic one to you. The reason why Christianity is better than liberalism is because the classical liberals, for instance, would puke on liberal progressives and their ideology. Liberalism is mutating. To a, you know, classical liberals were very much empiricists. They were very much uh, linked to the idea of the study of the natural world. Whereas progressive liberals now, and, and, and I'm including you both as progressive liberals, have moved away from empirical science and now you're, you've gone into uh, dogmatic faith, statements of faith. But they're just ones that you've made up. They're not grounded in anything. But you see the irony, there's irony in saying we're being dogmatic in saying Sorry. you can identify however you want, we don't care. And you're saying it's being pragmatic to say you have to be a man, you have to be a woman based on how you were born. Ignoring whether you're right or wrong. Sorry. When are you going to leave? Uh, later tonight. This evening. Thanks. This evening. I'll, I'll, if you're between six and seven. Yeah, go on. But, I mean, this is the main point, right? I mean, you even say you, can identi you identify someone as a man, you identify someone as a woman, and that might be different to how someone actually is, biologically. No, it, it's no different. If it's someone, no if someone, someone looks like a woman, they can't. They, they are definitely. A woman. If 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 they are born a woman, they're a woman. If they are born a man, they are a man. Okay, but if they look like a woman, someone could look like a woman. Doesn't and be a man, doesn't change what their genetic code is. But you agree, so you agree, right? Someone could look like a woman. I saw a trick question. Someone could look like a woman, but be a man. Someone can look like a man and be a woman. Yeah, yeah. that's right. But so but looking, I could look like a monkey, but it doesn't make me a monkey. Like, they, you know, you can buy really good costumes. Like, have you, do you, have you seen the Cadbury's advert of the drummer, the ape drummer? Or am I showing my age? Where he goes, do 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 Yeah, like from, from, yeah, yeah, yeah right? Yeah. He looked like a convincing ape. Like, just because someone looks like something doesn't mean that they are something. That's absolutely fine. Right, so some, just because someone looks like a woman doesn't mean that they are a woman. Okay. To be a woman. No, that is exactly the opposite of what I'm saying. Gender expression has nothing to do with gender identity. But you just said. Gen gen you sorry, gender and sex. Gender. Sorry, gender and sex. Gender and sex are just synonyms. You can use them interchangeably. Okay, so you're saying gender expression and sex can be two different things. I am saying that you can look like something. But that doesn't mean what you are. I'm saying that just because you identify as a woman, dress like a woman, present yourself like a woman, does not make you a woman. That is what I am saying, and that's very clear. Do you think we should suddenly, if someone, because you clearly you say gender and sex, say, oh, I won't use those words. If someone performs as a woman, do you defend those words? Okay. Let me ask you this question. And says they're a woman. Are you are you a doctor? No. Right. I want you both to do a thought experiment with me. Right. 
No, wait, I'd like, let, do a thought experiment with first, not yeah. after Let's not yeah. worry about the man in the beard <laughs> and the funny, oh, funny exactly. glasses. Exactly. Yeah. Let, let's, let's not worry about that. Yeah. So, no, I'm talking to these two. Right, Stop being rude. Stop being question. rude. Right. So let's do a thought experiment, right? Oh. You're a doctor, right? And a trans man calls you up and says, I think I'm having a miscarriage. Is that possible? Trans man, no. Right. Trans woman, no. Why can't why can't a trans man have a miscarriage? Trans man can, a trans woman can't. I literally just said trans man. <laughs> can a trans man have a miscarriage? A trans man, so a woman. This is not who, confusing. Yes. Trans man. Yes. I.e. A woman who becomes. No, no, no. Say. You no, no. Woman. You're right. You're right. No, I'm. I, I, I'm from a relationship and things that we know women broadly have periods not all women of course do but some do some don't most women get pregnant obviously some women do some don't most women have uteruses obviously some women can not have, might yeah. not have one yeah like we do know these things yeah but there's not a 100% case situation where every single woman fits under that one category no a woman with xxy chromosomes can you give me a what, what's your definition of a woman again because you haven't given one someone identifies as such right so what are they identifying as as a woman. And but what is a, a woman to identify as? It's a self-identifying. No, 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 hold on, bro. Like how right. you Logic. Let, 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 let me just. The point. The point. The point. The point, so the, point is, the point is. The point is. The point is. What you're doing is this. I'm asking you, right? You're saying that there's this group of people that are identifying as X, right? Let's just leave X unspecified, right? And you're saying that a person is X if they identify as X. And then I'm saying, well, what is X? And then you're saying, well, it's what you identify as. So we might as well swap out the word woman with dog. So if I identify as a dog, I am a dog according to your logic. So because I identify as a dog. Why, if I want to identify as a dog, am I not a dog? But here's the distinction I want to bring up. If you're identifying as women and if you are a woman, or if you identify as women and your sex is as a woman, they're different things. If we agree with that, at the very least, then what you identify as... I don't as, agree with that, by the way. If we suppose that to be true. But I don't suppose let's that to be true. Let's pretend for a moment. And just I'm let's not go pretending that. that that is true. Well, then how can I explain the difference? Exactly. If you don't ex pretend, exactly. If you want to even consider if we, the concept, if we remove, how can I explain the concept? But that's the point. If we remove, if we remove reality from this discussion, the whole discussion just evaporates into air, which is exactly what Marx and Nietzsche warned us about. Well, Marx didn't warn us about it, he celebrated the fact. But Nietzsche certainly warned us that when society decided to reorganize without God as its center, that everything would fall apart, that we would walk over a void, over a chasm, in which north no longer is north and south no longer is south, and we simply float in a void and we fall into a chasm. And this is exactly what he warned us about. This is exactly what he mourned in his philosophy. He recognized that it was happening and he feared the consequences of it. And you are the fruits that he warned us about. But what's the consequences of just accepting someone to not identify how they want to? Because, I'm not saying, yeah, let me be clear, I'm yeah. not saying, therefore you should let them do all the, you shouldn't change the law. Let's not talk about the law, let's talk about politics. Let's talk about healthcare, which, has been run roughshod, Travis Scott has run roughshod, yep. as the courts have shown, yep. over the rights of children, over the rights of people who are trying to get healthcare because the healthcare has been substantive. Just in terms of what you choose to identify, whether I call you a heel, whether I call you a shield, whether I call you a bay, why does that matter? Well, well why does it matter? Because I'll tell you why. Uh, no, no, society will end. No, no, bro, no, 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 no. Society will survive. But, but society won't well, be... If every man was a woman and every woman was a man. Let, let, so let me How reply. Uh, let, <laughs> okay, so let, let, let me reply to your point. So you've got a bit here as well. Yeah, right? thank you. So let me reply to that point. What, what, what does it, how does it matter? I'll tell you how it matters. Women have fought for equal rights. And now a bunch of men and their women enablers have decided that women don't exist. And that women rights and women equality is now being undermined because men are dominating female spaces. Women are being forced to accept men presenting themselves naked in changing rooms, fully anatomized as men because they've identified as a woman. There have been examples of women being in prison by men who said that they were women. These things matter because women are the victims of trans ideologues like yourselves. 
And I, as a Christian man, am obliged to defend the natural rights of women as the gentler sex to protect them from male violence, from male oppression. And that means I must oppose you because you are in favor of male violence and male oppression over women by the fact that you are in favor of trans ideology. You have, you have whitewashed women from the history books. They now no longer exist as far as you're concerned. There's no such thing as a woman because you, 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 still can't, you still can't tell me what a woman is. Try again, what is a woman? It's someone who identifies as such. I'm so what are they identifying that. as? How you, how you dress, how you perform, how you live in society. But what is that? Behave. What is that? What, what are you identifying as if you're identifying as a woman? You see, you can't answer. What are you identifying as if you identify as a woman? Yeah, what are you identifying as if you identify as a woman? I think it's literally as, as much as that. I think it's a very rapid definition. I don't think it's... So, exactly. Say, so you're now saying that there isn't a let's thing let's called a woman? Let's say that it, women are now identifying Someone as... Well, that's part of it. It's the press, all it of it. If it's so, the point is. It's I'm sorry, so your empty, point got lost. Gone. Let's just say that we can specify it as what women have looked like throughout history. Okay, we put it as that we are now distinguishing a difference between um, male and female and the identity of gender. You don't agree with that. I do, yeah, I don't agree with that because women. That is. But we are distinct, but we do. I'm sorry, but this is the lie of liberal progressives. Liberal progressives has reduced woman to how they dress and how long they grow their hair. The reality is, the reality is, that is not the experience of being a woman. Being a woman is dealing with estrogen, riding the dragon. Being a woman <laughs> is being able, uh, being a woman is being able to give birth. Being a woman is about having periods, about dealing with these kind of things. It's about dealing, dealing, women, dealing, deal with. no, trans there. men, sorry, trans but women, right? right? Or don't are, are, are as physically strong as other men. No. That is not the world that women live in. Men women live in a way. Li women, real women, actual women, the, the real women of the world, live in a world in which they must navigate the strength and possible abuse of that strength by men. A trans, a trans woman is as physically strong as a man. And therefore, could defend themselves like a man. Sorry, let's a be clear. trans, a real woman, pound for pound, would always be the weaker sex. That's, that's, not, that's the real experience of women. If they present themselves as a woman, they have to suffer like women do. They take hormones. They have to suffer like women do. Yes, yeah, so they're based on a lie because they have to chemically change their bodies. And also, but your your, defi your your definition of a woman is a woman is someone who dresses like a woman and grows their hair long. That's rubbish. That is not that is not the sum total of female experience. Female, you do not you. You're telling do. me no, the sum total of female experience. I'm telling you, you do not do service to womanhood when you reduce womanhood to how you dress and how long no, is your hair and whether you, you wear makeup. Where is like a tran a, a man can never be a mother. Never. Correct, yes. Can never be a mother. Doesn't matter if they call themselves as a woman. Men and women love children differently. No, men yes, love they do. As well. yeah, no one ever yeah, said anything different. different. I said they love children differently. Believe I'll give you an, just, an, just a, a sort of personal experience. It's not objective science. One of, the, one of the complaints that I know that happens between couples is that men have the ability to tune out. No. And that includes tuning out children. I, 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 I had this experience myself. Uh, this ability. I tuned out my own little sister, right, when she was crying in a crib. And my mum screamed at me and she said, how can you listen to that baby cry and do nothing? Because her mind as a mother was activated by the cries of my little sister in a way that my mind as a man was not. Right? But that is, that is an experience of womanhood that is unique to womanhood. It's beautiful. And you, in your sick, not, not your, not you're not sick, you're not sick, but your sick ideology has reduced womanhood to basically how you dress. Well, no, no, you have reduced the women's experience, what it is to be a woman, to how you dress, whether you wear makeup and whether you, uh, and whether you, whether you grow your hair long. That's not true. So what is a woman? What someone identifies as, and you're reducing it to and, purely biological. And how do you, okay, so now answer this question. How do you identify as a woman? Personally, I was born as a woman. 
No, I'm not asking you how well, you identify. Ident how does someone? Criteria. How does someone identify as a woman according to your ideology? Well, they say they identify as women. And how? And how do? Criteria. And they choose to represent themselves however they want. So how do they represent themselves as a woman? How they present themselves however they want to. So and they say so how do they? So if someone. It tends to be that they choose to represent themselves. Um, in a feminine manner. But so, a and of, how do they present themselves in a feminine manner? My dress is a dog, am I a dog? Yeah, we've, already yeah, we've already done that argument. <laughs> we've already done that argument. We've already done that argument. But plenty of people that were born as women choose to dress I know, in a I, masculine manner. I, they notice, they get misgendered even though they identify as women and they present themselves looking masculine. Like, no, so it's about, it's about how they appear, isn't it? No. Yeah, yeah, that's what. That's exactly the argument you've just made. No. You've just made it's how they present themselves. This is a how they political to thing. The, the whole, the whole distinction, the whole distinction that progressives make between gender and sex is that they say gender is a social construct based upon presentation, and thus they say that if you decide to dress in a long flowing dress and grow your hair long and wear makeup and you decide to present yourself in a feminine way with long nails that therefore, and there you call yourself a woman, because you have presented yourself that way, you are a woman. So in other words, progressive ideology has reduced womanhood to simply how you present. Christianity rejects that because we say that womanhood is like manhood, something beautiful and unique that is created by God. And there are experiences that are particular and specific and discreet to women that are not shared with men characteristics, abilities that are unique to women that are not shared with men that make women distinct and different from men and you cannot trans you cannot transform from one to the other. Back to your earlier, like way earlier religious point, you're, you, women you are women, men are men, that's it. group ideology is above the individual, right? One of my criticisms of liberalism is that it, it fetishizes the individual, yes. Right, so, but does your group's ideology recognize other religions, other people's beliefs outside of your group. Of course it does. Right. Okay. So in Native American belief of the two spirit, do you just what do you do you let them do what they do and believe that there can be a, a third gender identity or no? Right. So that's their practice. I mean, you won't respect well, their firstly, uh, in, or firstly, not? firstly, firstly, let's get this right. Indians aren't one one group. There are different tribes yeah, so with certain, different beliefs. And beliefs, yeah, exactly. Right? So let, let let's not generalize about Native no. Indians. Um, Native Americans, sorry. So the, but but if Christians come across something, a, a belief system that is false, mm -hmm. false. just yeah, false. Your definition of false. Yeah, like something that doesn't match reality, which is what trans ideology is. It's an ideology that doesn't match reality, because that which is truth is that which, uh, truth is that story, that narrative that corresponds to reality. Like your mental, spiritual, religious belief, and their mental. Spiritual, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm literally spiritual. answering your question. I'm literally answering your question. So truth is that which corresponds to reality. That which is false is something that doesn't correspond to reality. If I say gravity does not exist, gravity is a lie made up by NASA, right? Mm -hmm. Every single person immediately knows I'm talking rubbish. Why? Because I've given a description of the world that doesn't match reality. So if someone says to me that there is this indefinable word called woman and you can just identify yourself as it, then I know from biological evidence, historical evidence, sociological evidence, psychological evidence, that women actually do exist. And those that are arguing that women is just this social construct that you can identify as, I know that their story about reality is false and therefore I would seek to convince them otherwise, whether they're a Native American or an American, European American, or a, uh, an English European. I want to go back to this though, but you, and to understand a woman is what? It's a family of things that you say, assuming you're not a geneticist, we say it's a family of things, like it's probably going to get able to get pregnant, probably it, able to it. have a period. Why are, we, why are we talking about women as if they are it's? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to say it. If I said it, that's not what I meant. That's where your ideology has led you, bro. Pregnant, probably able to have a period not necessarily probably able to probably has a uterus not necessarily it's a lot of these things which probably are true but not yeah, necessarily there is, a, there is a, not all not all men have beards in fact even some women have beards mm. right 
close. Right, but but there but there, there there is a kaleidoscope. There is a no, we're really not. <laughs> this is your fantasy world, right? Mike for me. This, this is like. your fantasy world, and, and your fantasies are dangerous. They're dangerous to women. This is why you two are anti women. Well, let's, let's just take this. Right? Let's just take the ort because you keep going back to the is. Yes. I just want to take. So the ort. Let's go to the ort. If you so let me let me save state, my statement. Yeah. And then you say why you think it's wrong. Okay. If you want to identify as a man or a woman or any other gender or no gender at all or whatever on that gender spectrum, yeah. you should be able to. And as a society, it's not right or wrong to choose to do so or to identify others as such. Okay, here's my reply. Telling lies is bad. Do we agree? Do we agree that we should live life as honestly as possible? Yeah. Right. As a principle, living your life by the truth is a good thing. Are we all agreed? Right. If you create a society or live in denial of that which is true, that is harmful. And saying that women don't exist is a lie, a damned lie of the devil because it denies 50% of humanity their rights based on their gender. Notice how I'm using gender and sex as the same thing? Therefore, trans ideology is bad. Saying that you can identify as whatever gender you want is bad but because it's about, about living out a lie. Are you not causing the confusion now? As much as he is? Go on. Well, you refuse to distinguish between sex and gender. Correct. You refuse to distinguish between sex and gender. No, he does. No, I do. I well, promise you I do. Well, he does. He really does. If, if you ah. distinguish between sex and gender, why can't you define woman according to sex exactly. rather than gender? Yep. I think... In, no, I agree with his it's definition. It's a great point. I agree with his definition. No, no you don't. What, what's, what's my... Just not of gender. Well, yeah, so... We both disagree because we have a, a genuine disagreement. But why do you define woman according to a socially constructed set of stereotypes? Yes. Rather than sex? Correct. Because I think gender is socially constructed. Well, well I agree think on sex that. is biological. Well, yeah, well, we both agree on that. We both agree. Yeah, you but agree. why? No, but no. you haven't That's answered my so question. Yeah. My question Sorry, is, why do you use a socially constructed set of gender stereotypes to define woman, to define woman rather, rather than rather sex? Than biological sex. Yeah. That's the only thing we disagree on. I think there's two, I think women can mean two things. Does that answer your question? Women no. can mean two things. <laughs> well, there's women in the sense of sex and there's women in the sense of gender. Okay. No, there's women in sense of sex and that's it but we disagree that you yeah. can distinguish so so what no, so, we, we agree on we everything on except for why you use gender to define women <laughs> rather, rather than, than sex. sex so i'll tell you why so this began as a conversation around <coughs> law around politics around how we live as a society and how we live as a society we should talk about social we should use the social construct of the word. We should use gender as a social construct. And the point I'm making... I know, shocking, right? Shocking, right? If you want to identify as a man... Okay. I'm all right, thank you. How are you? No skirt off my back. doesn't matter. I'll give you a card. And I think it's a fair point. It matters point. to other right. people. Can, can it does. I, and I think it's a fair point to say. Can I... 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 Excuse me, sir. Women's sports. Excuse me, sir. Please. We were having a conversation. So, so, so let's be clear, right? Let's be clear, right? This is the this is the problem with liberalism. It, the, the the root of this problem emerges from liberalism's emphasis on the individual. Only with this one. The idea that the individual should be autonomous over everything. It has got to the point that it started off with the idea of the individual being free from religion imposed upon it. But it's got to the point now where individualism should be free from reality should be free from reality. The, the reality is you cannot give me a reason, a logical reason, consistent to your own worldview, that says, if I present as an ape, why am I not an ape? You can't, you can't give me a logic. If you are willing to say that, that woman doesn't mean anything and it's just how you present, then, then we can say that there's a difference between being a primate mm. and being an ape, because we're both primates, but we're not apes. So if I present as an ape, you have no grounds to say I am not an ape according to your logic, but you will now become inconsistent and you will now use the arguments that I've been using against you for the last hour to tell me that I'm not an ape. Tell me why, if I say I'm an ape 
and I present as an ape, I am not an ape. I'll tell you why I'm being consistent as well, so I'll come back to that point. Politically speaking, socially speaking, if you want to identify as an ape, no skill off my back, there's many thick people in the world, that's absolutely fine. And we shouldn't have a government or we shouldn't have a political society that's not my question. that tries to regulate it. That's not my it question. It's not true. So you think it's it should... It's not true. So you think... Like you are free to believe that. So you, that's what's good about... Why is it... Well, hold on one second. Did you see what you just did there? You just said, if I want to identify as an ape, it's not true. Did you see when you did that? So I've just said to you that men that say that they identify as a woman, well, it's not true that they are women. But then you say, no, 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 that's not fair. Well... Now explain to me why is if I present as an ape, that I am not an ape, that that is not true, but when a, a, a man presents as a woman, that they, it is true that they are a woman. It's a double because standard. one, it is a double standard. You're right. Because one is a social construct, and we had this conversation. We know what a social one is. A social. Is. What, so how? What, wait, wait, wait. You say one is a social construct. So what? What? How is an ape not a social construct? Because when we talk about ape, we're not talk no one's talking about ape as a it's gender. It's a separate species. Wait, wait, wait. It's a separate species. Yeah. Women are a separate gender. Thank you. Different sex. But, but, separate. Our, but the reason we have separated men and women in society is because it's a gender role that was placed on women throughout history. No, it's a, it's a gender role that emerges out of the fact that men yeah. and women are biologically different. Yeah. Okay, now, that has often, for a huge amount of human history, been abused by men. And women have been the victims of men's violence and men's abuse of their biological strength, right? There's no doubt about that in history, right? But that itself, those abuses emerge out of biological differences. You're trying to tell me that biological differences aren't real because you have unfixed your ideology from the real world. Can I just clarify, from your worldview though, as a Christian, saying, as a Christian, you're saying that there's social norms that have been created from what you see as biological reality. There are social norms, yes, social, there are social norms that are created by societies. Okay. So there's biologically, there's the biological facts of being a woman, yes. and then there's social norms that come from being a woman. Or there's, he, there, there's, there's yes. a distinction there, right? Yes, there is, yes. So there's the social side of it, yep. let's call that gender hypothetically, and then there's the biological side of it, we can call it sex hypothetically. Yeah. That's how I'm using those words. You can I use the words that, I'm not going to use words that way. Okay. That's, I think, really important though, because I think when we talk about social constructs, yep. we're talking about how we live together as a society, we talk about politics, we talk about laws about that restrict our freedom to behave in certain ways. Again, we saw in, in, in the 20s in Germany, not going in the darker period later, but in the 20s in Germany, we saw trans rights and burlesque shows and so on getting yep. restricted and limited. We see that today, we see in America, we see trans rights being restricted and limited in ridiculous ways. We see trans rights being made into, and someone's talking about conspiracy theory in America, this is my personal pet peeve. I think trans rights has become a sort of fetish, it's become a sort of effigy that we're trying to burn. It's, when there it's, are real it's, it's problems a fetish of progressive. Society. It's a fetish of progressive. All I'm saying is Where, let no. people do what they want. But you don't though. We you don't though. We you, regulate. No, 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 no you don't on gender, though. But Hold on one second. On Hold on one second. That's exactly what progressives aren't doing. Because if I misgender someone, progressives will prosecute me. Do you, do right? you think we one should second. One second. So that, that is what progressives are doing. You mentioned a bit of a contradiction. You said, yeah, yeah let them do whatever they do you, want, you want, but regulate them. But by you regulating them, you're not letting them do whatever exactly. they want. Exactly. Don't regulate you're them. You're setting limits. Don't. don't regulate them. So he, he ends up so in don't anarchy. don't believe in any kind of boundaries or No, limits. you yeah. regulate for things other than bait. Based on things other than gender. But can, can I, can I point? Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. On we all we all know why Jordan. We all know why we all know why Jordan. We all know why Jordan Peterson became famous, because Canada tried to introduce a law of compelled speech, when you had to um, use the pronouns that someone said these are my pronouns, and we now got to a point. Whereas if you misgender someone, as if such a thing were possible, if you misgender someone, you can lose your job, you could be prosecuted for a hate crime. Liberal progressives always talk about tolerance, let's have inclusivity, let's have let's 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 live in a world in which people accept one another, but they are the least tolerant people in the world. Except my religion. They are the most bigoted people them, in the world. They are the most fanatical people in the world. Progressivism is a religion. It is a this world religion. 
and it is, it is pushed by fanatics who are intolerant, who want to take away your rights, who want to take away your freedom, who want to force you to accept their dogmas, and all of you must oppose these progressives. You must oppose them because given the opportunity, they will cast you out of your job, they will cancel you, they will take away your freedom of speech. It is an evil ideology, just like Nazism was an evil ideology, just like communism is an evil ideology. Liberal progressivism is an evil ideology that every good person should oppose. And I agree, we should do more to protect Go freedom. On, the, the lady has society. a question. Go on. Um, converting others into your religion, yep. but and, but you're tolerant of others. Yeah. So do you believe in like, just letting people to do as they wish? No. No. Christianity doesn't lead to that way. So Christianity has a principle. Christianity has a view of law and how law should be used. So I'm going to quickly explain how it works. Firstly, Christianity says that law is a secular activity. So in other words, it isn't something that is prescribed from the book in terms of the covenant that we're in. It is a secular activity that secular societies prescribe their laws, but it's not voidless. It's not just creating laws in a vacuum. It's creating laws according to a set of values and a set of beliefs. So because of your beliefs... Let, let, let me finish. Okay. And, and our view of law is that the role of law is to hold back the tide of sin. It isn't to, to give freedom to sin. It's to hold sin back. But... In terms of doing good and what good looks like, there is no law. We don't prescribe what doing good looks like. We only prescribe against evil. So there used to be in this country, I don't know if you know this, there used to be a law called Section 28, which meant that you could not proselytize LGBT transgender ideology in schools to children. I want to put on record that I think we need to bring back that law and outlaw propaganda to schools that is pro-LGBTQT. We need to ban it because the result of it is that we are creating a society disconnected from reality, as you have witnessed in this conversation, and we're also allowing child grooming to occur in schools and the sexualization of children in schools under the guise of educating people about LGBTQ. Regulate what other people outside of your belief system identify with and believe in. Yes, and that's exactly what you're doing. But you're claiming that you don't. The difference I, I'm is, saying, I'm, I'm being very honest. I'm saying that I wouldn't actually stop your freedom of speech. I, if you wanted to misgender someone and call a man a woman and a woman a man, I would let you do that. I would not. I would not punish you for misgendering people for calling men women and women men. But progressives do want to prosecute me for misgendering people. So you don't think there's a difference between free speech and the inclusion of hate speech? I think that if I had to choose a world that was had a radical uh, adoption of free speech like they do in the US, or what the progressives are trying to push in our world, I'd go for the American model every time. I don't think it's perfect. I'm not a liberal. Remember, I'm a Christian, not liberal. Christians, not liberals. Okay? But if I had to choose between the world that the progressives want to create and the world that the classical liberals created in America, I'd choose the classical liberal America every time over the progressives. I'm not, I'm not committed to free speech ideologically. If you came into my church and started blaspheming, I'd grab you by the hair, I'd pull you out, right? If you started desecrating a Bible in front of me, I'd probably try and get that Bible out of your hands, right? I'm not pro free speech ideologically, but in terms of degrees of goodness, Free speech is slightly better than uh, having uh, the progressives control the limits of free speech. Do you not think it'd be better if we just lived in a society? This, this brother wants to ask a question. Okay. As much as I'm Bob knows, you know, I don't agree with Bob on many things. I don't like Bob with many things. But with regards to this, this is why you'll find a lot of Muslims and Christians, they support one another. They go to the schools and they protest. You acknowledge this, you can't disagree with this, yeah. it's the reality. And because despite our differences, the Muslim Christians will ask who decides what's right and wrong. Where is your moral compass from? How do you derive what's correct? All right. Look, you have you, uh, what's your name? Mia. Nice to meet you, Mia. Have you got a Bible? Um, yes, I do. Okay, God bless. Thank Take you. care. Yeah. So that's a fair question, right? Who yeah. decides what's we, right and wrong? We've, we've so kind of covered, we've kind covered that earlier in the conversation. Yeah. What did you say? So I believe that it should be, we, we come together almost 
groups like this and we essentially decide what should be allowed and what shouldn't be allowed. And we should imagine then, it in such mind. a way. Can I ask you a question then? So okay, I'm saying, do you, do you agree with homosexuality? Yes. Do you support it? I mean, I would like, allow it, in, yes. You would say love is yeah. love. You would allow yeah. it, but as in, do you support it? Yes. Yeah. Like so, politically, yes. Okay, so would you say it's because love is love and that's no one else's business? Because it's no one else's business, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. because love is love, it doesn't matter? Or? I don't think it matters hugely that love is love, okay. but I think it's because it's no one's sure. business what people do in the privacy of their own home. Okay. Except it doesn't, long time, it doesn't harm other people. One second, one second, one second, one second. The, the reality is, the, the reality is that up until, up until developments like things like the NHS, there were social consequences to the practice of homosexuality. The, the reality is that the spread of syphilis and the spread of other sexual diseases Different was rampant diseases was, were, was yeah. rampant amongst yeah. homosexuals but it was rampant it was like, if you go to a gum clinic mm. in the UK and you look at the adverts for gum clinics in the UK they are directed mainly to the homosexual community why because of that the proclivity because of the proclivity when you combine the male sex yeah, drive yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. It's with true. sexual it's diseases true. you get the spread of sexual diseases uh, that's, I, that's just a fact. I think a, a large part who of that suffered also, most, who suffered I think most, a large part, let me finish because you had your Per capita, one second, I'll, I'll, I'll end on a question. Per capita, which sexuality per capita mm. suffered most from the HIV virus? Men. Which kind of men? Gay, Gay men, absolutely. And AIDS. And I think yeah, one, of the biggest HIV, reasons, yeah. Yeah. one of the biggest yeah. problems of that was things like Section 28, which massively reduced education in the UK and similar laws in the US about about how to practice safe gay sex. And I think this is one of the problems of when religion gets involved can in I government. Make a quick point it's when yeah, 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 churches start trying to use morality yeah, sure, to we'll try and influence what we should or shouldn't do. Now, I think it's important as well, because let's go back as well, let's talk about sin, talk about, because we've thought HIV specifically, but in general, I think it's important to have clear, free speech, uh, symmetric information. It's about knowing what the other person is. If you've got HIV and you're not telling me, that's a big problem. And that's part of freedom of speech, just knowing about what's re, what's the situation, what is that. So it's that equality yeah, yeah. of conversation. So, if so you're standing up on a 12-foot pedestal, I'm not going to talk uh, to you. I, just, I know some yeah. people here do, but it makes it much harder to have an equal conversation. I think this is much better, right? Because we can have an equal conversation. Can, can I just add one point? So I think the difference here is this. We, especially I'm speaking from a Muslim perspective, I think you might actually agree with this. We believe in the concept prevention is better than cure, right? Mm. We set the boundaries, we prevent it from happening in the first place, rather than allowing it to happen then have to deal with the mess. This is why, and we ask this question again, who decides what is morally correct or incorrect? When you say, okay, yeah, love is love, homosexual should be allowed, then um, by that logic, if love is love, then do you agree with incest? Do you agree with a mother? No, but I don't if, believe in you. No, but I'm saying, do you, would you agree? because no, it's not, because not no, consenting they... in the... Wait, 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 well, I think they are consenting individuals. Yeah. Yeah. What happens? They're consenting. What happens? If a mother consents, consents one second. No, no, hold on. Son, do you no, wait, 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 wait. Now you're going to see one second. the real one second. of the calm, issue. Calm down, calm down. Yeah. Right. If, if, if a brother and a sister agree to practice mm. safe sex, so they will use a condom, mm. right? But they've consented yeah. as adults, right? They made that rational choice. Would you say that that incestuous sex is acceptable? Morally, no. On what grounds? <laughs> because it can cause so much damage, because it causes so much the harm. Safe I, 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 but the, the practice is really safe sex. Point. We'll but the, this hold point on now. Morally, I believe that the family unit is a very valuable part of society. Where they're they're not I think from? incest goes against well, that. Well, who now, defines a family? Now, here's the important difference, though. Let me, because I think... I don't think that's a heart matter. No, I think it's no, 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 no. This is is necessary. It's essential. Look, you're making me a Christian and a Muslim ally on this. I don't want to ally with this guy. Really, he doesn't want to ally with me. He really doesn't want to ally with me. Trust me. There's no Muslim in this park that likes me. No one, no Muslim, no Muslim in this park wants to ally with him. You're making him do painful things. He's suffering right now. Stop this. This is not. This is not very good humanist behaviour. You're causing him to suffer. No, no. He's free to decide. leave, he's free to have a conversation. No, all jokes aside, all jokes aside, but this is why I would say, on what basis do you derive your moral grounds from? You're saying morally, but where's it from? As in, you just make your own subjective morals? That's exactly what he's doing. Personally, I think it's about upbringing, I think it's intuition, I think it's There's emotion, I think it's lots of things. You acknowledge this But, I, but I also think I'm not... Yeah. Well, on, on what basis can you say... I'm not 100% wait, certain. On, wait, one second. On what basis can you say love is love, homosexual sex is fine, but incestuous safe sex is bad? Personally, yeah, because I think the family unit is important. I think it degenerates the family. Right. Well, well, wait, wait, wait. Well, what's a family unit? Uh, the family you grew up. Is it two men and their children? 
Yeah. It's, it's the people you grow up with. What about what about what about one man and four wives? What about in some countries? What about yes. what? About, so my point is, you because you're you're, you're, you're wait, 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 so what happens if society agrees that safe sex between a brother and sister is good? Why is it that suddenly you are uh, 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 taking umbrage yeah. at the fact of society coming to the social contract that incestuous sex is okay? So I think you're conflating two things, and that's why I think this is a problem. Go on, explain how. I think there's what's right or wrong ethically. I do want to, I think it's relatively simple. I think what, I think gambling doing it is bad for you, I think it's doing it's bad it's, for others. It's lying it's wrong. wrong. Morally it's, it's wrong. It's lying. Lying is wrong. People shouldn't be in prison. Exactly. <laughs> People shouldn't be put in prison yes. if they've told a white lie. Okay. People shouldn't be put in prison for gambling. People shouldn't be put in prison necessarily for doing something ethically wrong. That's why I think the difference. I agree. Would you imprison people for being homosexual or committing homosexual well, I need acts? To pray. Well, right. yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll hear. We'll What's your name, bro? Uh, Rayan. Rayan. Uh, Rayan. 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 Let's stop. Let's we'll stop. Talk All right. No. No worries, Rayan. <laughs> right. So, so my point to you is, you you haven't you haven't you, you at no point in this conversation do I feel you've assailed any of my criticisms of liberal secular humanism. And at no point in this entire conversation do I feel that you have actually delivered any sort of criticism of the Christian worldview. Now, to be fair, I suspect that you, you never intended to, you never wanted to, and that's why you haven't, so that's fine. But the point is, in your defense, or your, your, your ethical argument is based on social contractualism. Political argument. Right, it, and I, I want to keep bringing this yeah, point back up again. It's a right? political argument, but the point is, if society agrees that incestuous sex is okay, mm. I mean, remember, society once believed it was okay to have apartheid. Mm. Society once believed that it was okay to um, to enslave people. Mm. Society still tragically believes that it's okay to abort your children. Mm. Society, um, it, you know, German society believed that we needed to wipe out all the Jews. Mm. Like. Societies come up with different rules all the time. If your argument is purely, well, it's just what society agrees amongst itself, then it is quite possible in a hypothetical world that society could come to the conclusion, well, if two free individuals practicing safe sex who are brother and sister decide to have sex, then well, it's their own business. Love is love, it's, it's what they're doing in their own home. It doesn't infect, it doesn't in impact anyone. Yeah. But in the Christian faith, I have a reason to say that that's wrong. Mm. In the Christian sisters, faith, the, 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 it, it's actually it's spoken against. But, so this is my problem when you say things like that as well. Yeah. You say in the Christian faith. Yes. <laughs> Many slavers thought the same things 500 years ago. Can we talk about that? Yeah, go for it. So, so do you know what the slaver's Bible is? Not off the top of my head now. Right. So this shows you just how anti-slavery the Bible is. When the Americans, when the American slave owners gave Bibles, because they felt this compulsion to, 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 to convert the slaves. But when they gave them a Bible, they actually edited, edited out entire sections of the Bible because they feared if they gave them an unrevised, unedited Bible, that it would inspire the slaves to seek their own freedom. Are you talking about the if you read the book, if you read the book of Exodus, it's one of the greatest anti-slavery tracts ever. When Hernan Cortez went to Mexico, yeah, he didn't go there going, "I'm going to mislead people on the Christian faith." He said, "I am going to raise these people up or kill them by their droves because if they are not Christian, they are not human." Yes, and as is Ayatollah Khomeini. Okay, Quran, great. Now, now, do this, now do this. Now do this. Now do this. Show me in the Bible where his actions are justified in the New Covenant. Hernan Cortez very much believed it was. No, that's the not the question. Sorry, that's not the question. Sorry, that's not the question. Sorry, that's not the question. The question is, show me in the Bible where Hernan Cortez would go to to justify the mass extermination of the Latin American people. Just ignoring him, bro. Answer the question. Personally, you don't I'm not know. Do you? I'm not a religious. So right. I would assume. Can, can I tell you? you look at the can I tell you? Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Th th there is no justification for that. The problem, I mean, the, the difference between <laughs> liberal secular humanism and Christianity is, I have an authoritative text and an authoritative interpretation of that text. You don't have anything, so you have nothing 
by which you can pin the idea that incest is wrong? Uh, in, says, in the authoritative in the text. Of right, what, liberal second. secular humanism? There is no authoritative text. Of the Bible. Yeah, we're talking about, I'm pointing out to you. not thinking there is, I mean, there is, you, I think you would agree, in the Old Testament there is stories of genocide, of right. Canaanites, there's so, stories yes. of slavery. So, now, now, yes. sorry, let me, let me finish yeah, yeah, Now, I'm not saying whether that's right or wrong, because I'm not a theologian, I'm not as, as well studied as you are on that subject. Because I'm thinking about things in terms of politics, I'm thinking about how we run a society, not how I believe individually. I think if an individual can come to that conclusion, we have to work out a society where we can live together. But that's that the, doesn't that's base the, itself on a book that some people interpret it to justify genocide, yeah, justify yeah, slavery. Yeah, we should yeah. find a way that we can live together, yeah. which which is based on living together, yeah. not based on something else. Right. So, and I would say Christianity is still the better way to do that. Because if we were going to create a world, mm. I think we would want to create a world that is built on love and good faith and hope and justice and prudence and chastity. Uh, yes, I, I'm most of the way with you there. So well, you, you, you just said you just said chastity is about is about is about controlling one's sexual urges so that you're not controlled by your sexual urges. Okay, so it's stoicism. Uh, yeah? Yeah? It's not stoicism, it's chastity. Stoicism is the belief, stoicism is the ethical practice of, of, of upholding the virtue, so it's a virtue ethic system. And I've just I don't described to, to you... A, I've just, I can go on a bit of a rant myself. Yeah, I've just, I've just described yeah. to you a virtue ethic system. So what I'm saying is, if we look at how do we create the best society, the one that a, a rational a, a person and, and instinctively is drawn to mm. is one that is tutored by apostolic and prophetic okay. teaching. Just talk about virtues then. Yeah, Would you believe a society that believes in self-righteousness? Self-righteousness? Or righteousness? Righteous indignation? Righteousness? Not timidity? These are terms. Not over-bravery, to use what I was talking before, but righteous indignation, when you see wrong, you challenge and, ch you challenge and change it. Yes. Okay. Do you agree that some people's understanding of what's right and wrong would disagree would differ to yours yes if we created society based on that as a key pillar yes. that virtue we run into trouble if right? you, yeah, but if that's the Very point quickly. but that's that, that's what that's the problem with but, but that's the that's the problem with liberalism yeah. is that liberalism is just virtues gone mad well, it's vigil it's liberal no the problem the problem with liberalism the problem with liberalism the problem with liberalism is that it's virtues gone mad Li virtues on in a vacuum in the Christian worldview, they are they are pegged in by certain beliefs and certain values. So because of those certain beliefs and certain values, virtues can only express themselves. That certain avenues of how you could yeah. express virtue are shut down. They're shut down. But you can't identify. So, self, so for instance, self righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. Like which could easily actually be covered by the term. Uh, um, covered Even by the term the of, religion, of righteous read, indignation yeah. it's actually something that's spoken against by Christianity. Christian, yeah. so being true. ethical is about practicing and repracticing and learning how to do it better. That's how you become ethical. That's according to the Christian system. But I think this is the important point. Politically, when we live with others, you can't Christian base it based on political. values independent. Henry you VIII live the your values. I'm sorry, I can't hear you over this guy. Sorry. Go on, say again. But you live your values. Say it, so start again, because I didn't hear you. You live your values. Could you start, start again? Yeah. Start start again. Okay. What we did live, you say? We, we live politically. We live around and with other people. Yeah, that's one way we, we express our ontology, right? yes. So, if we're living our... To live with other people, we have to accept that other people have yeah, different yeah. values to us, and we have to create a society which isn't based on our own individual values. That's my point. But the point we have is, to not, find a way to live not, together. Not all values. That's not based <laughs> not all values. On not all values are equally valid. Yeah, absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. And individualism, individualism, mm -hmm. is not as valid a value as the value of the church. Well, the church isn't a value. Though. Yes, it is. The church is a no a value. A value. No. What is a value? Well. Let's leave the examples we gave. We talked about chastity, we might say prudence, we might say courage. No, those are virtues. They're okay, not what values. Do you mean by values then? So exactly. So a value is, is the worth that we ascribe to something. If we ascribe worth to anything, it has a value. Your sunglasses cost something. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. So it has a value. Yeah. Right, it's how much do we value it? Your life has a value. Yeah. Yeah? I, I would say that that the value of the church is more important than the value of the individual. 
Why? Because human beings were never meant to live as individuals. It's natural to us to live in community. And so, because it's natural for us to live in community, we should organize social units that are village sized and the church is the and the church can embody that the idea of creating village sized communities in which people are born in which people are raised in which people die in which they can know one another and know other people and be socialized in those units the problem with individualism the problem the problem with individualism is that it destroys the village element of human nature and so we're not living according to our human nature and this creates lots of psychological problems one of the reasons why there's an increase in depression an increase in the sense of let's just call it generally being lost in the world is because individuals are growing up and living in isolation and that isolation is being um is being is being uh, doubled down on as it were, by the liberals obsession with the novel, the new, as expressed in terms of technology. Because technology is increasingly isolating us from one another. It's increasingly separating us from real relationships. If you've got a thousand Twitter friends, but no real friends you meet up with week to week, you haven't got real friends. My, my, my belief of that's a problem is you'll find your own community online, your own niche values of a out of a million yeah. who will agree with you on every single time. Human beings need well, physical... Well, 20, well, 20 years ago... Human beings years need ago. real interaction. Then do you like people who disagree, who are different, who disagree, who create a novel world? So that's not community then? Well, it is a community. No. He's living with other people. It's not with individualism that's not community, community. That's, no that's not community other people that is not community that is a, a society based on individualism and you're conflating community with a society based on individualism a community is a group of people that are brought together and are united by common beliefs common values common practices common customs that's a community and they need, and they need, that has and to be the lowest part, no, and this is why I think it's not the lowest. It's the, the highest. It's the, the highest. Lowest part that should be set as low as possible. No, rules. that's the that's the optimum. They but need, to make government work, you go need on. it to be as low, uh, unless we start going back into work, a village need, of fifty people. I, 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 and if work, I live with you and you live with me, and you need you need a higher authority than us yeah. to make those rules. Amen. Who knows about higher authority sets? The church. The church. The church. The, church. Yeah. the church. the church is the people of God. So not me. Yes, so that's correct. No, that's that's correct. Exactly. That's that's monarchical because dictatorship it, at this no, point. No. That's why I'm so have, against it. Have, it should be together coming together. Using the word church. Um, no, there can definitely be communities outside of the church. There can be other forms of community. Yes, absolutely. So, for example, so for example, like Jewish kibbutz. That would be an example of community. Well, without any religion involved. It's community versus individual. Well, that's the problem. Because community without, without any other power. No, because it doesn't work. Yeah. Is my neighborhood watch a community? Because Tell us why. Tell us why. Uh, because I would say it's an association. Because everyone's rules are then subjective. I think you're getting so, you so pedantic. No, I'm really not. An association, an association is a group of people that unite over a common cause. A community is something that are united in a common cause, but they share values, beliefs, customs, and traditions, and a history. An association can exist inside of a community, or it can exist independent of community. And a neighborhood watch is an example of an association independent, possibly independent, of a community. But you could also have a neighborhood watch from within a community as well. Okay, so brother, I'm, I want to I want to start wrapping this up. So that's I, fair enough. No, it's good to talk to Bob, isn't it? Yeah, Steve, nice to meet you. Bob. Nice to meet you, Steve. Have, have you got enough. a Bible, Steve? Uh, I do not. I, I'd like to give you a yeah, gift. Go on, right up. I feel like you've said had no, enough nose today. So here's my gift to you. I, I pray that you read it, mm. and I pray that you consider our conversation as you read it, because this built a successful civilization. It was inspirational to a successful civilization. And the further we've moved away from its teachings, the worse things have gotten in Western civilization. I profoundly disagree, but yeah. <laughs> I, I, All right. I think you're surprised. You look at this. Well God bless you. Thank you. Yes. Peace be upon you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I was you. just wondering, 
do you talk sometimes to the guy that has the the Quran stand and say takes a Quran? I, I I try and talk to them from time to time, but they've got it, to the just, point now where they just run away it, from it. It's just because, and I mean, he all he wants to talk about is history. Yeah. To try to disprove the Bible. Yeah. And when obviously you know more about history than me. Yeah. But when he actually about the Bible, he has no arguments. And when I ask him a question, he couldn't answer me. Ask him if Jesus was Muslim, how come the concept of heaven and Jesus' concept of heaven is one is spiritual, one is about heaven virgins? Yeah. And then he couldn't answer. The, brother, you know the best thing you can do when you like the best thing you can do when you see a Quran mm. stall is ignore it. But, yeah, since, but, 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 but since you've taken the Quran, can I just suggest you chuck it away? It's not worth keeping this. Right, and what you've done by going up to that Quran stall and taking this Quran is anyone else who watched you now may be encouraged to do the same as you. So yeah, you've yeah. actually helped them by doing that. So can I encourage you to go back and just put it back on the stand and then leave? Yeah, because that is the, the, the best thing to do when you see a Quran stand is don't go there, don't that's, talk to them. That's not a Quran. Yeah. Well, that's true. It's that's an English translation. A, yeah. yeah, it's not. It so they're not. They're not. They're not even. They're not even giving Arab, you a Quran. Quran. So, brother, what you've done by taking this Quran is you've encouraged other people to take the Quran. My advice to you is to either chuck it away or just put it back on the stand. Yeah. I'll probably chuck it since you say something. But I'll yeah. keep it. Thanks for yeah. the advice. All right. God bless you, Rob. God bless you. Take care. Oh, I'll send you an email. Brother, yeah. I, I have thousands of emails. <laughs> There's too many I, 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 I try to email. I try to respond to I try to respond to between 40 and 50 emails a week. Oh wow, that's yeah? a lot of emails. But like I, I get obviously more than 40 or 50 emails a week. Yeah, do you do any courses on theology? Yeah, I, yes, I do um, a discipleship and apologetics course on a Monday evening via Zoom. Via Zoom, I'll, I'll, is then it on your website? Uh, you can you're on my blog. You can apply to enter into that course, yeah, yeah, and yeah, then I'll, I'll let you. Yeah, yeah, I'm quite interested on the whole apologetics. So side. drop us an email, yeah, say yeah. that you want to join the group, and I'll I'll bring you into the group. Okay, God bless. Thank you very Peace much. Be with you. Get rid of that book. God bless. You. God bless. Take care.